Good morning, sports fans. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Sadi, and today I'm going to show you how to use my MoGraph Elements in Fusion. These are free to use, and I'll post these with the code for you to download and use in your own projects. You can go in and change colors, text, keyframes, etc. to suit your own needs. If you're new to Fusion, and you just need titles, animations, or lower thirds, you can use them as is, or you can take them apart and use them as a learning resource by reverse engineering them. Before I start, a quick word about file formats. A channel subscriber named RT asked how to copy and paste Fusion code that I post. Thanks for the question, RT. Here's how you do it. Files created using standalone Fusion software have a file extension of .comp. These are simple text files that retain vector information, kind of like SVG files used in vector drawing programs. Because these are resolution independent, you can scale them up without losing quality. DaVinci Resolve does not write .comp files, rather .drp files or DaVinci Resolve project files. And media management in DaVinci Resolve is carried out by a, a database system meant for ingesting film and television dailies. So .drp files are not standalone files that you can efficiently share with just anyone. Chances are you probably won't even know which folder they're hiding in on your PC. So what about you and I using the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve? How do we save our Fusion work and share it with friends and collaborate on them? The simple answer is simple text. Everything in Fusion can be saved as a text file and shared easily. Let's take a closer look. Let's start with a blank project, add a background node. Now, let's create a simple text file on the desktop. Let's call it one. Open it. Take your background, control C to copy and paste it into your text file. As you can see, this background node is now appearing here in the text file as simple text. And it says tools ordered, blah, blah, blah. Let's create a couple more nodes. Another BG, merge the two together. And we have three nodes. Let's select all of them and create a group. Now we have a group. Let's copy this, control C, go back to our text file, delete this, and paste. Now you can see that the node group is appearing here in the text file, and it says group operator here. Next, let's take a macro file. I'm going to pull up a macro that I use all the time. And this macro is for making thumbnails for my videos. Let's do the same thing. Go in here. Select everything and delete it. Okay. Take your macro, copy it, and paste it here. And now all the tools that are in your macro are showing in the text file. And notice that instead of group operator, it says macro operator. Let's say you download a macro. You can change the properties that are available for you to change, but then you can't really access everything that's inside that macro. If you hover on the macro, you can see all the nodes that are inside. So if you wanted to break the macro apart, here's how you do it. Let's copy this, control C, move this aside. Take your notepad, paste it in, all the way at the top where it says macro operator, change it to group operator and save it. All right, and now you can copy it. and you can paste it back in control v now this is appearing the macro is appearing as a group so you can ungroup that and you will see everything that was inside that macro and you can go ahead and change whatever you want so any which way you look at it fusion nodes are just simple text whether it looks like a text file a dot setting file or a dot comp file or whatever now that we know how to grab the code for Fusion and put it in a simple text file, let's go ahead and grab the free Fusion uh, MoGraph element that I just posted. Click on the file, pause, and scroll down. In here, you will see there's a link for the Fusion code. You can go ahead and click on that. 
and here's the code. As you can see, tools ordered. So this is just the tools without any groups or macros. You can click on the download button and go ahead and save it on your computer. And there it is. I'm just gonna cut this out and paste it on my desktop. Now let's go ahead to DaVinci Resolve and paste this in. Here's the code. Double click to open it. Control A to select everything. Copy. And paste in your flow. Here's your animation. I'm gonna set the render range to 60 frames. Let's go ahead and play it. Looks good. Easy as pie. Another way to copy really quickly, click on the file and right here, instead of downloading, you can just hit Control A. This will copy everything. But notice it's also copying the file name, which you don't want. Control C to copy. And then let's create a file, call it two. Paste it here. Now you have the code. Just remember the file name also got copied, so you could just delete that. Just keep the curly bracket. Make sure there's nothing extra on the top right here. There's a little space, you can delete that. And you can save it. And then we're gonna copy. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Let's go back here, delete all this, and Control V to paste. So this is the other way to copy and paste the code that you get for free. Now let's go to DaVinci Resolve, create a new project and add the code that we just copied. New project. Let's call it MoGraph. Create. Go to the edit page, add a Fusion Comp. Put your playhead right on top of it and go back to the Fusion page, Shift 5. By default, you'll get a media out node. You don't need that. You can delete that. Paste the code. Click on the final output and hit 2 to view it. Shorten the Render range to 60 frames, I think. Go ahead and hit play. All right, looks good. Let's get to work. Let's say we wanna change the colors on this animation. So there's a, let's pull up a second viewer. There's a teal colored background that you can look up. And let's say you want to change the color on that. Or if you want to use these circles on a video file or an image file, what you would do is bring this down to black and change the alpha. So now you have just the circles. All right. If you want to change the color of the yellow circles, click on the first color node. As you can see, all these nodes are going vertical except for these color nodes, which have a thin green line connecting them. That means they're instances of each other. So the first one is the one that controls the main color. So if you change that, all of the colors for the circles will change. Now let's say you want to use this as a transition. How would you do that? A pool party invite. Let's go ahead and bring in some media. So you got this one image. Let's bring in another one. Do that. Okay. So these could be just images or these could be videos. And let's say you want to go from one to another one. So let's take this background out and pipe this one in. So now you have the animation playing on top of your video. And let's say you want to change the color of these circles to the orange accent here. So go ahead and click on that. Pick screen color and just like that. So now it matches really nicely. Take the next 
media, the second one, this is going to go in the end. Grab the second media, add a mask to it. Let's animate that. Go to 30. Go ahead and link the height to width so we can control them both and set a keyframe and then go to say 55 and keyframe again and we could put it up here all right so let's see how it looks cool next what i would like to do is not have this end circle right at the right in the middle of the frame so i'm just going to move it to the side and also i'm going to go into the spline editor and take my mask select the tool and i'm going to ease it hit s to smooth and drag the sandal let's go ahead and see what it looks like now simple fun animation just download and use cool next let's say we want to create a simple lower third with this animation the uses are endless right so here's how you would do it take the bottom background make sure it's transparent black and transparent so in order to create the lower third all these circles need to be reduced in size so we're just gonna create a transform node and pipe this in here and then go ahead and size it like this let's go ahead and place it right here where we can make a lower third out of it let's say there's a video or a image in the background uh, that this animation is going to go on top of. So let's go ahead and take that. Merge this in. Just make sure that this media is actually the background and everything coming on top will be the foreground. So Control T, do flip. There you go. Looking good. We can add some titles text merge invite change the color and go and now you want the text to animate with the circles so let's go ahead and start at 20. And at 40. 40 would be the default and 20 would be the zero. Let's go ahead and play. And you can take the animation and just run with it and do whatever you want. Because you have the source code, all the nodes are available to you to do whatever you want. I'll post a bunch of transitions and animations for you guys to play with or use in your projects. I hope you guys are able to follow. If you are unsure of how Fusion nodes work, uh, there's a bunch of tutorials out there that will teach you the basics of how to create nodes and stuff like that. If you guys need help with uh, the basic stuff, let me know and I'll post some more tutorials to get you guys started. If not, we'll just go on to the intermediate stuff where we can just take these uh, ready-made animations and start using them in our work. Well, that's it for uh, this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. Happy compositing. I'm Sadi, and I'll see you in the next one.